Welcome to another tutorial on Superimpose app. In this video, I will explain the tools under the editor section. I am doing it on an iPad again, but the interface is almost the same on iPhone as well. When you go to the editor tab, you can see a number of tools to edit the foreground and the background. Superimpose, X, has tons of tools in this section, but in this classic Superimpose also, we can find a quite a few. Just like in Filters section, in Editor section also, you can choose between the foreground and the background image. The tools are applied on the selected image. I have already created a project with a foreground and a background image. I want to put the foreground image as a picture on the wall. But since the foreground image does not align well with the wall, I will need to change the perspective of the foreground. Let me do that using this perspective tool under the editor. Under this tool, I can grab and move around the corners of the image to change its perspective. You can also enable a grid to check that the lines are straight. The control points will snap into the grid. You can choose between a coarse and a refined grid depending on the size of the grid that you are looking for. You can also use the pinch zoom, rotate and pan gestures to move the image around. You can single tap on the screen to switch between zooming the selected image, and zooming the entire image. Press the reset button to reset all the changes. Let me now align the image into the wall. Okay, this looks perfect. It looks like the picture is on the wall. Let me accept this edit by pressing this accept button over here. Now let me move on to the next tool, which is text. Text tool allows you to add a text into the foreground or the background image. I am choosing the background image and now opening the text tool. Double tap on the text to edit it. I can move around the text like this. On the bottom you can see that there are a couple of setting categories. Under basic, you can change the color of the text. Make sure that the text is selected when you are changing the settings. You can also use any of the textures here to render the text. This slider can be used to change the opacity of the text. Under Fonts, you choose a font. Pressing the S button here will bring up all the system fonts you have in the device. You can also choose a font from here. Under spacing, you can adjust the spacing between the letters. You can also adjust the spacing between the lines like this. Under shadow, you can add a shadow to the text. You can also change the color of the shadow. But I will keep it black. You can adjust the properties of the shadow here by pressing the settings button. I can also use the pinch zoom, rotate and pan gestures to move the text around. You can single tap on the screen to switch between zooming the text and zooming the entire image. You can use these control points to rotate the text. And tap on this top left control point to straighten the text or rotate it clockwise by 90 degrees.
Let me accept the text. I can also go back to the text tool to do more changes if I want. You can use the plus button below to add more text and thrash can button to remove a text. I have created a different project for the next tool. I have a dog as the foreground, which I have already masked. And a rocky beach, as the background. The next tool is called Focus. Using this tool, we can give more depth of field to a picture. Here in this image, this tool is creating gradual blurry look. More blur towards the distant points and less to the points near to us. I can move this line around to make the blur gradient wider or narrower. And I can use rotate gesture to rotate the direction of the gradient. I can also change the shape of the gradient. This one creates a bilinear gradient. This one creates a radial gradient blur, with less blur in the middle. The other one creates more blur in the middle. I can move and rotate the gradients using touch gestures. And single tap to switch between zooming the image and zooming the tool. Let me use the linear gradient tool for this project. And we are done. Let me accept the edits. I did not explain the image feature of the tool. Let me load a single masked image from the mask library to explain that feature. I have masked out everything except for the dog and the log. I am opening the focus tool again. I do not want to apply the blur on the dog. Instead, I want to blur the area hiding under the mask. I can do that by choosing background. Here background means the masked area, not the background image of the project. I can give a depth of field to selected portion of an image using this technique. Mask out the area you want to blur, and then use this tool. This tool has the advantage that it won't leak out the pixels under the unmasked area into the masked area while blurring. If you use a combination of mask and normal blur, you will see a halo around the dog while blurring. Now let me accept the changes. I am moving to the next tools, motion blur and zoom blur. They also use the same concept of masked and unmasked area for blurring. However, I am using a different masked image to demonstrate the features. The first one is motion blur. This gives a motion blur effect to the image. Let me accept it. I will now move on to the next tool, zoom blur. First let me undo the motion blur. Here again we see similar settings. But this time the zoom is controlled by the point in a circle. I can move it around to change the origin of the blur. Amount of blur can be controlled by this slider here. And make the circle bigger and smaller to adjust the blur amount at the center. The zoom style can be changed to spin, as well, but for this project I am using the zoom blur. Let me accept it. Now let me move on to the next tool. 
and for that I will use a different image. Next five tools are for distorting the image in various ways. You can use them to create some fun effects or in some other creative way. First one is ripple. It can create water ripple like effect on the image. You can move around the center of the ripple like this. Change the frequency. The amplitude, or how big the waves are. And the shape of the ripples. The next one is bump. You can create a bump and move it around and adjust the size. Zooming it in and out increases and decreases the area under which the effect is applied. Pinch is similar to bump, but the effect is just the opposite. Swirl can swirl the area under the circle clockwise or anti-clockwise. Glass can give the photo a look, as if we are looking into the photo through a patterned glass. You can adjust the density of the patterns and the thickness of the glass. Also you can choose from three different types of pattern of glass. The last tool is called Reflection. To demonstrate this, I have created another project. In the foreground, I have this castle that I have masked out. In the background, I have a lake. I will apply the reflection effect on the foreground. This creates a vertical reflection of the castle, along with transparency. I can apply this effect and then position the edited foreground in the transform section to make it look better. That is all in this tutorial. Thank you for watching.